So to start off, let's go ahead and import our image into the scene. And we're going to do this by adding it, it to the camera. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and click on this front and perspective panel. So now you have a left and a right. And on the left side, let's go to view, image plane, import image, and let's find that concept. Okay. Next, we're going to raise this up a bit. We're just going to use the left side as a reference panel. And obviously, if you have a second monitor, you don't need to do this. Um, but it's always handy for me since I'm only using one monitor here. And then on the right side, we can select that, go to show and hide image plane. Okay, And we can also put this in a layer. So select that and click on this ball and put this as reference. So now you can't select it. Now for the modeling part. So let's go ahead and create a cylinder. So go to create polygon primitive and then cylinder. Let's scale that a bit. And then in your channel box, go to your inputs while well select well the cylinder selected and then go ahead and type in on subdivisions axis 36. And that's just for us for later. And let's go ahead and make sure that this has the same the height and the width of that mug and then we can increase the height or um, move that up on top of the grid. Next what we're going to do is we're going to select the top part so it's going to be the top and the bottom and we're going to separate that from the the cylinder itself. So go to edit mesh and extract and now you have the sides and the top and bottom and what we can do is we could delete the top side for now. And then for the, the, the side, go ahead and select that and go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. And we're just going to extrude this inwards, maybe to around there. Now you'll notice that the, the normals are flipped. So just go ahead and select that, go to Mesh Display and Reverse. Now it's back to where it was. Next, we're going to create these metal rings. Fastest way to do that is just go ahead and duplicate your cylinder. So select it and control D to, du to duplicate and just scale that down and adjust the width on it. Just a little bit um, wider and then move that up. Just keep looking at your concept bar, make sure it's matching. And then I control D to duplicate again and then slide that over. So now for the bottom part, let's select that. And actually let's hit center pivot and then scale that down to fit somewhere around there and then we can move that up. Okay, that looks good. What we can do here is add um, thickness to it. So while you have that selected, go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. And I made a button for that here. So I'm just going to go ahead and extrude that probably downwards or so. Select that and just move it. So with the wire, with the uh, X-ray button on, that's how it looks from the inside. Okay. So now that we have that, Let's go ahead and select the whole thing and just sort of eyeball the model to the concept and make sure it has the right height to it and width. And that feels pretty good. And we could just adjust this later on once we have the handle. For now, we're going to create the segments of the mug. So I think there's six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. And remember, we made a 36 uh, span of 36. So we're going to divide this into six. So go to your top view by pressing space bar and then go to top view. And we're going to choose six of these. So let's go ahead and choose six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one more. Okay. Once you have that selected, let's go to perspective real quick so you see what's going on. So we selected that. If you hold Control, Shift, and I, it inverts that selection. 
And what we can do here is we can just delete that part. Now it's really important to, to keep the pivot point still in the middle. And then next what we're going to do is cap these ends. So if you go to your modeling toolkit, here we go. Let's isolate this real quick by selecting this and clicking on this isolate. Let's go ahead and um, cap these. We're going to select the edge on each side and press bridge. Same thing for the other side. Select that edge and click on bridge. All right, so now we have that one segment. And what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate this five times. So we have a total of six. So if you go to edit, duplicate special, make sure the geometry type is on instance. And the, the rotate for the Y axis is 60. And make sure number of copies is five. So go ahead and press duplicate special. And now you have five of those or six total. I mean, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And the cool thing about this is since we use the instance, anything you do with on any of these elements, it does it to the to the copies. Okay, so we could just edit one and it should edit all of them. So let's say we want this to be down. So select that edge. So I, what I did was hold right click and select the edge. And then you could just pull that down. Next, while well, you have that edge selected, and the way I selected the edge was I just went to my uh, edge selection by holding right click and selecting, selecting edge. And then once you have that, double click on that edge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna um, add a bevel to this. So head on your modeling toolkit. And the way I got this is on this icon right here with the hammer. And then click on bevel. While you still have the bevel open, you could hold middle mouse and just slide that to maybe 0.2. And we're gonna do that to the other side too. So. Um, while you still have your, your edge selected, go ahead and press bevel. And you could type in point 0.2 also to match. And then we're going to do that to the bottom side. So hold right click and then select on edge, double click on that. And if you want to do the inside this at the same time, hold control and shift and then double click on that as well. So now you have the outer ring and the inner ring. And just go ahead and click on bevel and type in 0.2 on the fraction. Okay, looks like it's uh, not matching the top part too. So let's do 0.3, see if that, that looks better. Yep. Okay, so now that we have those ends uh, beveled, we're gonna do the inside now. So isolate this real quick. And then let's select just these outer edges. Okay, just like that. And just the same thing here. Make sure you're just selecting just the outer edge. And go ahead and hit bevel. And 0.5 seems to work well, so we're just gonna keep it as that. And while we're on their modeling toolkit, let's go ahead and use our multi-cut and add these lines right here. So what I'm doing is connecting this vert to the other side, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side as well. Okay, we're doing this because once we import this into ZBrush, it might crash on us because it's a five-sided or an, an N-gon. So we've gotta make sure that it's either a quad or a, a triangle. So once we're done with that, let's go ahead and get out of isolate. And now we have all of this beveled. For the handle, let's go ahead and start by creating a polygon primitive. We're gonna go to create polygon primitive and then plane. And let's go ahead and scale that down and rotate this plane to 90 degrees. So if you hold E and left click, 
make sure you're on the screen so it snaps and then just turn that over 90 degrees make sure it's on the um, x-axis and then the z-axis pointing downwards and let's scale scale this down just a bit what we're going to do is we're just going to shape up the handle and then extrude that later on so let's go back to this tab right here so we get our channel box and let's turn off the layer for the the image real quick okay let's hit spacebar on the left so we're going to start working on the front view and then let then let's turn on our wireframe so turn on the shaded mode and wireframe so you have that wireframe and then once you have that layer off we can move that aside so we can take a look at it and just zoom in on that so what we're going to do here is we're going to shape up this this handle silhouette so we're going to start off from here and then hold right click and select edge and so you can start selecting the edge we're going to use a lot of extrude so make sure uh, your extrude button is docked in your shell and doing that you, you you just go to edit mesh hold control and shift and then click on extrude and that should add it to your my shelf mine's right here so every time i need to extrude either i'm hitting this button or i'm pressing g to do the last action so let's go ahead and extrude this and then we're just going to shape this up by using our vertex and edge selection so we're going to be bouncing a lot on those two selections so I'm, I'm getting that option by holding right click and then changing to either edge or verts. Okay. And then just extrude that over. And we're just shaping this up, just blocking it out. Push that down a bit and then move the verts around. And then next we're going to create an edge loop using our multi-cut tool. So if you go to mesh tools, multi-cut, you could just add that. So the button for my multi-cut is this one. So every time I click on this, it's the multi-cut tool. All right, so go back to edge and then extrude this. Get the handle. And it doesn't look good right now, but we're just blocking it out. So don't panic if it doesn't look good. And it has that curve. So we're going to add another edge. And then shift the uh, change the verts and then just move that up. We're gonna do a lot of this polish and ZBrush. So as for the block out, we're just doing this in Maya. Okay, another edge loop right here. Then shape this up. We could probably move this this ring. So go back to your object mode and select that ring and just put that bring that down. And maybe scale that up a bit. And let's go back to our our handle and extrude the top part shaping it up and then we can probably adjust the edge loops on this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this edge and then just add another edge loop to get that shape okay add another one there So it's slowly building up and looking like the concept. And then for this, we can extrude this a little bit higher. And then I just, just adjust it. Now select this edge right here and press delete to remove that edge. Okay, we might need another edge right here. Another option to use when you you want to add edge instead of the multi-cut tool, you can also do insert edge loop, which I have right here. So what this does is you can do the same procedure without having to click as much. And you can slide it the way you want. And then if you let go, it adds that edge loop. So let's delete that real quick. Go back to our verts and then just shape this up. Okay, so we might need another one, another edge loop right here. So let's go ahead and insert edge loop that and then move the verts. All right, so that's looking much better. What we can do is add extrude on this. So select the edge, 
hit extrude and just move that down. Okay. Once you're happy with the, the silhouette and how it looks, make sure the thickness is the same too, you know. Like if it's looking too thin, just go ahead and adjust it. And then it has that nice rounded uh, inside. So let's make sure we copy that. For the top part, same thing. It sort of curls inwards. So we got that going. Okay. We could clean this up a little bit. So go to your multi-cut tool and add another cut right there. And then maybe for this, let's add it going that way. And then select edge, select these two edge, and then just press control backspace. And what it does is deletes the edge and also the vert. And then let's just space these out. So it has that 150 degree turn right here. So let's make that. Okay, that's looking much better. All right, so let's go back to our perspective camera. We'll just hit this window right here. Let's zoom in on this concept and just make that smaller. Okay, so go back to your object mode and click on that handle. Make sure we move this slightly over to the right. And then go to your edge selection and double click on that edge. And we're going to hit extrude. And using your move tool, if you hold X, you could snap that to the grid. So we're snapping that to the center. So now it has thickness to it. And let's go ahead and move that pivot point to the center also. So if you, you're under the move tool, hold D and X, and you can snap that to the grid. Once you've snapped that pivot to the grid, let's go ahead and duplicate this. So go to Edit, Duplicate Special. Make sure it's on Instance, and the scale uh, negative 1 for the Y axis. So go ahead and hit Apply. And now we have it duplicated on one side. Okay, make sure that the width of this is pretty um, accurate to the concept. And right now it look, it's looking pretty fat, so let's go ahead and move that using the world and move that to slightly thinner. Okay, that looks much better. Let's go ahead and adjust our mug because it seems like there's a little bit of extra space on top of this. So click on one panel of the mug and go to Vertex and just move that up. Okay, and then for this ring, oops, let's go back to our modeling tool. Lower that slightly and maybe adjust this and just selecting the verts and then moving that up. Now we might need to add another edge loop here. So let's go ahead and add using our in insert edge ring and then just move that slightly. And then for this, we can move that so it has a nice curve to it. Okay. For the bottom part, it seems like it sort of flares out a little. So let's go ahead and add another edge ring here. And then just select the bottom part. What we can do is we can move this. Let's see, just use the world and just move it upwards like that. Okay, that might be too much, so. There we go. So it just flares out just a bit. Next, we're gonna create these bolts on the metal part. So let's go ahead and create, call it poly primitive, and then sphere, and then just slide that over. Then we can rotate this 90 degrees, make sure you're on discrete rotate. Okay, and we'll just position this real quick. Now we can delete the half of this. So go to face and then just select 
half of it. I'll go ahead and delete that because we don't need it. Then we can just scale that down and just position it slightly. So looking at the concept, it feels like you have some gaps in between. So move it slightly down. What we can do here is we can actually just um, scale this on the Z axis. So it's flattened a little and not so round. Okay, and then just bury that in there. Okay, scale it down just a little bit. Now what we can do here is we can snap the pivot to the center. So if you, if you hold D and X, you can move that pivot to the center. And then we're just gonna duplicate this around. So you still have your discrete move on your rotate, this one right here. And control D on this will duplicate it. I'm just gonna snap that right in the middle. It's it's between a plank, so we're not gonna put it on the on the segments. So we're gonna move this too. And then we're just gonna duplicate it again. Control D and then move it. Control D and then rotate. <clears throat> Control D, then rotate again. So I think we could do it one more time for the inside. All right, so we have that going. Next, what we're gonna do is combine all these rivets. So hold Control and Shift, and then click on each of them. And then, and then combine. So go to Mesh, Edit Mesh, let's see here, Mesh, and then Combine. So now it's one object. And then what we're going to do is duplicate it for the bottom part. So control D and just slide that down. Make sure it fits. Okay. Then we could probably scale this up. So on the on the Y axis. Okay. There you have it. Now that we've placed the bolts, let's go ahead and adjust our proportions on the overall mug. So starting off is the handle. Looking at it from the concept, it looks like this might be a little too big for us. So we're gonna select both objects, the, the, the original and the mirrored. And then we're gonna choose this, our scale tool, which is R. And let's go ahead and scale that down. Now we can adjust this by moving it up a little so i'm looking at where the placements are and then just moving it forward maybe we can select it with our vertex and select this edge and then just put it inside now we can adjust these so it has a nice flow and the same thing for the bottom select the bottom half of that object and scale that down or, or slide that down and then so just select these these vertex and then move it inside. And then for this, we could just shape it up so it has a nice flow to it. Maybe bring this down a little so you can actually put a hand in there. It's not so cramped. Then move this aside. Okay, now we can add another edge loop here. So we, let's go ahead and use our insert edge loop tool and then go to your vertex and just move that so it has a nice flow to it for the for the leather strap on the handle we're gonna actually do that in ZBrush so we don't need to block that out in Maya um, so right now uh, focus on the the proportions of everything and make sure it's looking like the concept then for the top part maybe we can adjust it just a little bit higher so that looks much better. The next thing we're gonna do is add a bevel to our handle. So let's go ahead and select that and isolate it. Next, we're gonna to go to our edge selection. And while holding Control and Shift, double click on the edge, and that should give you an add a selection to it. Okay, just do that all around. And maybe we could do it on the inside too, on this edge, and then maybe here. 
and then double click on that. So once you've had that selected, go to your modeling toolkit. If you're on channel box, it's on this left side. Click on that and that would be the modeling toolkit. Then click on bevel and make sure fraction is around 0.4 or 0.5. I'm putting it on 0.4, that looks pretty good. And then let's get out of isolate mode and see how it's looking. Next, we're gonna do these two rings. So the same thing, go to your edge selection, double click on an edge, hold control and shift and then double click it again. Then bevel, and then we're gonna adjust this to maybe 0.1, let's see here. So 0.1 looks good. So we're gonna keep it to 0.1 and do the same thing here. Go to edge and then select these two edge. Then hit bevel and then 0.2. There we go. To finish off our base mesh, we need to add extra edge loops to some of these elements so ZBrush can get help when it's subdivided. So let's go ahead and start with doing the one of the panels of the mug. Go to your edge selection and just select all the edge, all the center edge. And in your modeling toolkit, go to connect and make sure your segment is around 10 and just hit connect again. So now we have all these edge loops in the center. We can also add edge loops using our insert edge loop tool. And then we can just add some of this here and then maybe these two rings, add some there, and then here. And the same thing for the handle, we need extra edge loops. So our high poly can have a nice spacing when we subdivide it in ZBrush. And so we're just adding this manually. And then finally, the bottom cap, we can just adjust this by moving it up slightly. And let's isolate this real quick and give it more thickness to it. So use your vertex selection and just move it up. And then we can add supporting edge loops on around here. And now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and get out of isolate mode and then make sure we combine the mirrored part of the handle. So let's go ahead and select both of them. And then we're gonna do combine go to merge to merge the the verts we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here so select everything go to mesh cleanup and then under operation select matching polygons uh, make sure you have checked faces with more than four sided and go ahead and press on cleanup and it looks like we have some that are five sided uh, underneath the mug so let's go ahead and select one of these panels and isolate that. So this is the issue right here. I'm gonna turn off my grid real quick. So what we can do is use our, our multi-cut tool and then just connect this edge all the way to, the, to this part right here. Okay, go ahead and get out of isolate mode. And then go to file, export selection, and then we're gonna call this mug underscore base mesh. Make sure the file type is OBJ export and go ahead and press export selection. And now we're ready to go into ZBrush.